What to think of an Orwell Extrema that costs less than a third of the Aries and only half of the Aries LE? Will it be Aurelic enough? Aurelic became known rapidly for the Aries streaming bridge. That's not a streamer in the classical sense, since it didn't contain a DA converter. It needed to be connected to an external DA converter using SPDIF, DOSLINK, AES, EBU or USB. There are two versions of the Aries, the full version and the LE version. The Aries Mini on review here uses the same Tesla computer platform and control software but is aimed at a lower market. Instead of 1749 for the Aries and 1099 for the LE, the Mini will set you back 499 euros. For that money it also contains an internal DA converter but lacks a display, remote control, AES EBU output, half the RAM and the unique housing. So the question is whether the Mini misuses the good reputation of its siblings or is it a good offering by itself? The matte white or black plastic housing meshes 135 by 135 by 30 mm. The top of the front holds three buttons which functions can be changed between volume and pause or next pre previous track and pause. Everything else is controlled by iOS app. The rear holds a 15 volt DC input, a network connector, two USB 2 connections, optical and coaxial SPDIF and stereo analog out on RCA. All very simple and clear, but it is worth mentioning that the USBs both accept storage devices like hard disks and thumb drives and USB audio profile to DA converters. The Mini comes with a 15, 15 volt switching power supply. A panel on the bottom is held in place by only two torque screws and when you open it you can add a 2.5 inch hard disk or SSD. A mounting bracket, a torque screwdriver and the necessary screws come with the unit. After installation the hard disk needs to be formatted so there is no point in copying music to it prior to mounting. After installation and formatting the hard disk will become accessible over the network as a share so you can copy the music to it. The standard way to control the Mini is by iPad and while an iPhone version is near completion there is no mention of other OS's. According to the manufacturer there are several other ways to control it. Open Home compatible control software and UPnP AV compatible control software. For that you need to use a UPnP AV server like Minim server, Tronky and for instance JRiver the NLA server. That will most likely slow down operation for the Aurelic Lightning DS control software is quite quick as where the UPnP AV slash DNLA often isn't. Apart from that the Mini also supports Songcast and Apple's AirPlay via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Installation is simple. Install the app on the iPad and just follow the steps on screen. You'll be asked what Aurelic device you want to install, get instructions on connecting the Mini and fill in the password for your Wi-Fi access. After that the install program will automatically check for updates. The last step is to tell the Mini where the music is after which you, it will start indexing your music collection. Depending on the size of your collection this can take considerable time during which you do need to keep the iPad app up and running. The number of tracks that can be indexed using the Lightning DS control software is not published, but my 8500 plus albums 128,000 tracks gave no problem. And if you use UPnP there is no limit other than that of your server. In the app the setting menu lets you change the name, choose the operating mode, Lightning or UPnP, switch to AirPlay and Bluetooth, choose for a wired wireless LAN, several reconstruction filters, digital out over SPDIF or USB, DSD 
over PCM on or off and the functions of the buttons on the top front. There are many other settings of which I only mention languages where the choice is English, German or two languages that uses Chinese characters. The settings menu also gives access to the online user guide. As always, if you're not interested in tech, skip to the timecode below. Apart from the hard disk dock, the Mini is not supposed to be opened by the consumer. But nothing stops a veteran, I thought. Well, not. After getting the housing open, it appeared that almost everything on the PCB is wrapped in metal, as if rap artist Crystal was involved. The metal covering is not to keep out prying eyes, but to avoid interference. A second metal plate is mounted below the PCB. What I could see is a 5 volt voltage regulation with filters built with capacitors and inductors, very nice. The other thing that became visible is the Tri-Band 802.11 AC Wi-Fi board. This is the latest standard and not often found on streamers. Aurelic doesn't make a secret of what's under the tin. A 1 GHz quad-core ARM Cortex-A9 processor with 512 MB of RAM and 4 GB of multi-level cell SSD for data storage. This is where the database of your music collection is stored. The DA conversion is taken care of by the Sabre ES1980K2M. This DAC is well respected but, as I've said before, the, the way it is implemented is very important too. Just using this chip doesn't guarantee quality. The build quality here is excellent. The only wires I see are two Wi-Fi antennas and the extensive shielding makes me hopeful. The Mini eats about anything you can call music. AAC, AIF, ALAC, APE, DIF, DSF, FLAC, MP3, AUG, WAV, WV and WMA containing PCM in 44.1 kHz to 384 kHz and up to 32 bits or DSD at 64, 128 or 256 volt sampling rate. If you want to connect an external DA converter, it will support DSD over PCM as well, up to DSD256 using the Coex SPDIF or USB outputs. The optical connection is, due to its nature, limited to 192 kHz PCM and thus DSD64. The app is very responsive, even with my large catalogue. As always, it does take some time to get used to, but that goes for any controller app. Remarkable is that you can not only sort your music on artist, album, composer and genre, but also on release date, last modified date, last import date, sampling rate and file type. For those that like internet radio, a large collection of categorized internet radio stations are available. The category local does indeed provide me with Dutch stations. Tidal is also supported and after entering my subscription, it was quite easy to find the impressive farewell album Black Star by David Bowie. To describe the sound of the Mini, I have to let you in with one of the trade secrets. Manufacturers make a distinction between normal people and audiophiles. There are even large manufacturers that have loudspeaker lines for both markets. It's not that they put all their qualities in the audiophile product while putting less effort in with products for normal people. It's more like car manufacturers making family cars and sports cars. Family cars are for travelling with all the family members in ease and comfort, while sport cars are for performance and entertainment. The Aris Mini clearly is a sports car type. The sound using the analog outputs is analytic and spacious. It will set your auditory system to work. It sounds more high-end than its competitors, which makes it a less preferred choice for my 700 Euro Set 3. There, a Blue Sound Note 2 produces a more comfortable sound. But in the 3000 Euro Set 2, it's a better choice, although it will scale in at the lower end. And then another high-end property of the Mini comes to aid. Tweakability. Replace the standard power supply for my favorite linear power supply, the S-Boost the best of two worlds, 
and you're up to almost middle set to quality. Connecting the Chords Hugo deck brought it in the upper regions of my set 2. By the way, go to the hbproject.com slash en slash about for a full description of my reference set. Let's take a look at the competition. The Sonos Connect is an antiquated design that is limited in number of tracks that can be indexed and sampling rates and does no DSD. The Raspberry Pi using the Hi-Fi Berry DAC Plus Pro with proper linear power supply doesn't have these limitations. It sounds better on normal CD quality files than the Sonos and offer higher sampling rates and DSD too. But you do need to be handy with computers and a soldering iron to make it work as I described in a separate video. See the link in the top right corner. If the sound quality is a priority, the only ready to use products that came close to the Mini is the Blue Sound Note 2. It is limited in sample rate, but who uses sampling rates higher than 192 kHz? It doesn't do DSD, which might be a limitation to some. Just like the approximately 3500 CD capacity of the memory. Having said that, it does have inputs that can be shared over the network, has six presets and supports more streaming services inclu including those that do MP3. See the top right corner for a link to the review of the node. To use the metaphor again, the Blue Sound Note 2 is a very good versatile family saloon. Your Relic Aries Mini doesn't support MP3 streaming services, has no input to share over the network, but has a very fast 802.11 AC tri-band Wi-Fi, does airplay and songcast, supports up to 384 kHz sampling and DSD-256 support DOP to send DSD to an external DA converter, has external power supply that can be upgraded and, like the Blue Sound noted, it will support MQA as a free update as soon as it is released by MQA. It will be clear that the Aurelic Aries Mini is a sports car here. It is the more audiophile product at an affordable price. You can start with a Mini only, then over time improve with a better power supply and an external DA converter, in that order. People that hate computer equipment switched on to play music can have a hard disk or SSD built in for the cost of the hard disk only. Two and a half inch drives come in capacities up to 2 GB for only slightly more than 100 euros. SSDs with the same capacity come at prices from 660 euros upwards. 2 GB can hold about 4000 CDs in FLAC or ALAC. The Aries Mini isn't the average Joe product. It's a true high end product at a non-high end price that will please any connoisseur including myself. It makes me curious how much better the Aries sound, so let's put on my review list for the coming time. So if you want to remain informed, subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there. You'll find the information below this video in YouTube. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.